Over the next 50 years, more wheat will need to be harvested than has been produced since the beginning of agriculture. For many decades, production matched increasing demand. Better farming methods and wheat breeding delivered increased production. But in recent years, the rate of increase has slowed. This worrying trend is playing out all over the world, and we need to achieve annual gains of around 1.6%. Within the Wheat Genetics Programme here at the John Inner Centre, we aim to provide tools that will increase productivity for this global crop. Our aim is to try to achieve this through genetics, through two main approaches. Firstly, to take the variation that breeders already have available to them, but to better understand it and to allow them to deploy it more efficiently. But secondly, to take genetic variation that has not been available to breeders. It's trapped in land races and wild species, and we need to bring it to the fore so that breeders can exploit it in, breeding, in new programs and exploit that for completely new opportunities. This search is conducted using germplasm from across the globe, including a huge range of diversity from ancient land races and their wild relatives right through to the thoroughbreds of modern agriculture. A significant sample of this diversity is captured by the BBSRC Cereals Collection, housed in the Germplasm Resource Unit Seed Store in Norwich. Here at the John Innes Centre, we hold the largest collection in the UK of wheat and its wild relatives. There is the potential in these seeds to address many of the desired traits that we require to develop new elite wheat varieties for the future. At the John Innes Centre, we have the expertise in genetics to unlock this potential and exploit it for the benefit of farmers. Our job is to get the genes out of the seed store and into the breeder's trial plots. We do this through two parallel processes. Genetic diversity is assessed both in terms of crop characteristics for key traits like yield, end use quality and stress tolerance, but also for molecular diversity. Crosses are made in a bid to unlock the wealth of genetic variation contained in this collection. These crosses build families of wheat in which genes influencing key characteristics are identified. The crosses are used to create segregating populations, which are used in field trials of exactly the same type as those used by wheat breeders, so the genes we discover are relevant to UK farming. In the glasshouse, leaves from each unique individual are harvested for the extraction of DNA in the lab. Single changes to the four-letter DNA code can be used as genetic markers. These genetic markers are being used to type individual lines of wheat. In recent years, we have been able to scale up this process. BBSRC-funded work, such as the Wheat Improvement Strategic Programme, or WISP, involves the sharing of key expertise in the UK wheat community. The partners are the Universities of Bristol and Nottingham, NIAB, Rothamsted and the John Inner Centre. These are exciting times for wheat, the full genome sequence is very close now. This will accelerate the process of gene discovery yet again. When we put together molecular marker data with the performance of individuals in these populations, we are able to map the genes controlling key agronomic traits for bread wheat. We then calculate the impact of these newly discovered genes for wheat breeding in UK farming. However, the challenge is still enormous. We need to provide wheat breeders with the tools to understand and exploit the biological processes that underlie the key traits for UK wheat breeding. Grain yield, stress tolerance and end use quality. The goal is to provide new momentum to wheat breeding. Through the work described here, we can help breeders maintain their hard-won achievements 
and build them gene by gene. I usually try to answer interesting biological questions, but they really have to be interesting as well in the field. So you can combine the two, and there's very good science to come from very interesting things that can happen in the field, and we try to put those two things together. And, and the breeders keep us real. If the breeders are not interested, that's a pretty good indication that uh, it's probably not of interest today.